In many American cities, there's a growing crisis of homelessness. The highest rates are on the West Coast. Suffering one of the worst problems is Seattle, home of the high-tech boom in a city once considered a jewel. Correspondent Eric Johnson of Sinclair Station Como in Seattle reported on the issue in an hour-long special called Seattle is Dying. Here's an excerpt. Let me ask you something. What if Seattle is dying and we don't even know it? This story is about a seething, simmering anger that is now boiling over into outrage. It is about people who have felt compassion, yes, but who no longer feel safe, no longer feel like they are heard, no longer feel protected. It is about lost souls who wander our streets, untethered to home or family or reality, chasing a drug which in turn chases them. It is about the damage they inflict on themselves to be sure, but also on the fabric of this place where we live. This story is about a beautiful jewel that has been violated and a crisis of faith amongst a generation of Seattleites falling out of love with their home. There is another part of this story too. It's about a solution, an idea for a city that has run out of them. And I ask again, what if Seattle is dying and we don't even know it? I drive my 12 uh, year olds carpool through Yesler uh, when we do carpool and it's a good talking point about, you know, what they're seeing, what we can do to help, you know, how we can make a difference. And honestly, at this point, I don't have a good answer for how we can make a difference. The last five to 10 years, it's not the place that I grew up in, and it's been really sad. Matt Campbell lives and works in Seattle. He's raising a family, and like many others, he's mad. It's, uh, it's gotten to a point where I'm embarrassed of it. I, I don't want to have my friends and family come here anymore. People didn't used to use the word embarrassing about Seattle, but if you listen closely, you'll hear it a lot now. You know, it, it's embarrassing. It, this, is, this is one of the most beautiful regions in the entire world. And right now, with lack of a better word, it looks like And it's embarrassing. This is Merdad Derek Shande. He runs an upholstery shop in Ballard near the Burke Gilman Trail. See if you can't feel his frustration. This is just, this, this is just a bunch of, this is not right. Out his window, he looks at this. Oh, they're human beings. Yes, I'm a human being too. Customers coming to his shop see the same thing. I have known cops from Compton, Watts, South Central. They have some power in their hand. Here you see a bunch of twinkle toes running around here. What the heck? Because they run the city like that. They're having problems. They're having problems. They're not having enough authority. Last May 2nd at a town hall meeting in Ballard, simmering anger boiled over into all-out rage. So why do we see so many people living outdoors? Will you manage these camps and will you enforce the law? There has evolved a profound disconnect and rarely has it been more vividly laid out than in this exchange. If property crime is committed, violence is committed, you need to call 911 and the police. You've lost all credibility when you say, you said two words. You said, call 911. Do you understand that the police have told us to vote you all out so that they can do their jobs? And you're telling us to call The way we're living in beautiful Seattle, people are angry, furious about the way we are living. You can just feel the frustration. Eric Johnson joins us now. How do city officials defend themselves against the accusations we heard where some people are blaming them for the problem? Well, the first, the first thing they did was, you know, kill the messenger. Uh, they have a, a strange relationship with a PR firm in Seattle. They launched that PR firm to cast what they called 
a counter narrative to Seattle is dying and what it talked about, the addiction issues. You know, it, it wasn't really about homelessness in general. It was about a subset of homeless, homelessness, the addiction part. Um, so there was that reaction. Uh, it, they, they told people that crime was down. They said, you're not seeing what you think you're seeing. Is it's, that true? It's not true. And, and, uh, but here's the deal. The people weren't having it. The people of Seattle had had it up to here. This, this documentary uh, confirmed in their eyes what they had suspected all along. And, and they rose up and they woke up and they heard, they, they raised their voices and started attending these uh, council meetings and, and demanding change. And we're actually starting to see it. Who do you think does share blame for this, if not the city? If they say it's not our fault, you know, is there some, are they correct, perhaps? Uh, it's been a, a complicated, nuanced, layered, perfect storm of incompetency. Uh, the judges aren't sentencing. The prosecutors aren't filing charges. Because of that, the police officers aren't arresting. And because of that, of course, crime has, has, has risen up. At all of those levels, it's been this, this perfect storm. It's what they've allowed. It's a policy. This didn't happen. It's not a miracle that it happened in Seattle and these other cities. Uh, it, it didn't just happen. It's policy. And the policies allowed it uh, to happen. Well, looking at the broader picture, we've heard of similar problems in other places, Los Angeles, San Francisco, but we're now starting to hear about homeless crises in places like on the East Coast of Florida, yeah. for example, where you didn't hear of it much before. Um, what's the commonality? Is it just getting worse all over? The commonality is a, is a numbness, I think. I think a commonality is not understanding that this is an addiction crisis not a homeless crisis, not a housing crisis. This is that subset I was talking about. It's about addiction. And to lump them all together is to say, hey, these are all just our neighbors who have fallen on hard times. The addiction part of it, I maintain, and this, this show maintains, to leave these people alone in these lives that are reeling completely out of control, to let them inhabit the camps that they're inhabiting, is not compassion on any level. It's in a form, it's, it's killing these people. They're not getting the help they need. Uh, you use this stuff long enough, guess what? You're going to die. And that was kind of the point of this thing was we have to intervene in lives running out of control. And where can we see the whole hour? You can see the whole thing on YouTube. You can see it on my Facebook page, Eric Johnson, K-O-M-O. -O. Seattle is dying. Very powerful.